In this video, I'm going to show you how you can pair and connect your PS4 controller to your iPad, but also other important things like which games support it, the battery life, should you buy question, and much more. So let's just begin with it. Using a controller to connect your iPad is supported or has been supported since iOS 13. So in case you have like an older iPad mini or any other iPad which runs the iOS 12 or something, you're not going to be able to connect it. And the way it works is that you simply grab your PS4 controller and you hold down on the share icon, which is the button right there and also the PS button in the middle. And you hold down on both of them at the same time for a couple of seconds until it just starts blinking. It doesn't matter if it's already being connected to any other PlayStation or something, just hold down on these and you'll be able to pair it. Then you go to the settings and of course to the Bluetooth section and the DualShock controller should appear somewhere there and it should be uh, allowed to you to connect to it to your iPad. But uh, there is so much more that you should know about it and here are some of the key concepts that I have. And the first one is the concept of using hands. Like of course if you want to use a controller you have to hold it in both of your hands. And that means that your iPad has to be put in an angle that you can always see it. And it's just not going to be possible in a bed because you cannot really hold the iPad and play the game with the controller at the very same time. The best idea would be to have some sort of stand, whether it's any case that you can fold or you can lean your iPad on a table with a wall or something, or you can even have the magic keyboard. I mean, all of them just get the job done. The light on the controller is definitely there, but I don't find any way to customize it at all. Like, it's just always going to blink or be uh, like really lit in one color, and there's pretty much nothing what you can do about it. And I don't really see any pattern in this, and I cannot really see that the color would change. It's pretty much the same all the time, so that's kind of an issue for someone, I guess. Also, you don't really have a lot of control on uh, the outside area of a game. I mean, you cannot really move around uh, the home page. I mean, you can kind of switch back and forth between apps. And if you click on X, you can actually open it up. But that's pretty much it. I mean, you don't really have anything else here. And you cannot really leave the app. The battery life of the controller, well, on the iPad, I mean, of course, if you take a look at the battery of the iPad, it should not be really be considered, because it's the same as if you would play the game without a controller. A little extra power for Bluetooth is nothing significant. But on the controller, the battery life is pretty good. About 5-10% to 10 for an hour of gaming, which is definitely acceptable. And many people will just stop after a couple of hours of playing anyway. So it's just not really possible to drain the entire battery if it's been fully charged before playing a game. But you can also see the percentage of the battery on the widgets, whether you have it in the, in the widget panel or right on the home screen, it should be there. And also when you reach 5%, it will vibrate to let you know. So uh, it's not, I mean, the battery features are definitely there. And the PS button, of course, the PlayStation 1 in the middle of the controller, doesn't really do a lot. It just gets you to the open, I mean, to the app library and to the games section with just one tap. And there is also nothing which you could do about it. So, so these were the things that you need to know when you're using the controller to play some sort of game. But not every single game naturally supports it. Like if you want to play something like Fruit Ninja when you're literally slashing fruits, I mean, how can you use the controller with that? I mean, that would be kind of difficult and pretty much not the fun, I would say. But for many other things, the controller simply works. And there's a list of arcade games that actually support it. So you can actually browse and see which one does and which one doesn't. Keep in mind that this list or these games change on really like a monthly basis. So there are always new games that support it. And it can also happen that some of the older ones simply stop supporting it, but that's not really a case a lot of times, I would say. But also, you can see it in the App Store. Like, if you go to a game, you can see uh, the icon there that it supports the controller. So you know that when you download this game, you will be able to play it with your PS4 DualShock controller or whatever. But uh, this isn't really the case all the time. Like, if you take a look at something like the classic GTA game, which is notoriously used with the controller even on the iPad, 
you don't really have anything like that mentioned in the App Store. Like, it doesn't say that the controller is supported, but we all know that it really is. So perhaps there are other things and other games that support it without us even knowing it. Also, if there is an icon that uh, the controller is supported next to a game, that means that you can download and play with it. This means that there is full control and, uh, the f of course, the controller works fully with all of the features. But it can also happen that some game which doesn't have full support can be used and played with the controller, but not to full extent. And this would mean that you would be able to, for example, move around the UI of the game, but would not be able to play it. Or you would be only um, having some sort of functions and not all of them. Like, you couldn't control the entire thing, only just a part of it. And this definitely sucks. That's why the support isn't officially stated. And now the question is if you should buy it for the iPad. Well, this really depends on the person you are. Like, using a controller is much more ergonomic than the touchscreen, and ultimately, games are created for consoles like PS4 and Xbox. So, if you're serious with gaming, that means that you probably have another PS4 or Xbox. Uh, so, in that case, you should consider buying it. But in if you have, like, a PS4 already, then you probably have the controller as well. But the thing we're talking about is buying the controller just for the iPad. And if this is worth it, it's kind of debatable. It also depends on the price that you pay for the controller, if you buy it as brand new or as used, and what exactly you plan on doing with this. So uh, it's of course convenient because you're not covering the screen with your fingers, but like I said, and like mentioned earlier, you need to have a stand for the iPad games that will support it, some of them are paid, some of them are free, and if you really want like a good library of games, then Apple Arcade subscription is gonna be a must, so this is another expense. So it's just not just the game and uh, the gamepad, I mean, uh, there are more things involved. So you ultimately have to decide and answer the question for yourself. So this would be pretty much it. I really do hope that you enjoyed this video and found, found it valuable, and for more information and content like this, in the future, of course, make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for more videos. If you want to see more videos like these and want to support it, then leave a thumbs up so it jumps up in the YouTube algorithm. Thanks a lot for watching and see you guys later.